I thought this week instead of a vlog I'd basically just do like a proper old school sit down video where I answer some of your questions because I had quite a few on Instagram and yeah I thought why try and cram it into a vlog when I could just make it a separate video and talk through I mean a lot of these things are around well-being but there's a couple in here about like relationships um slow living morning routines all that sort of stuff so i'm going to basically just go through all of these and answer them my intention with this video and i mean with all my vlogs actually is to speak as if i'm speaking to a friend and catching up with a friend so i'm going to try and do as minimal editing as possible if i do edit it's because i have rambled and waffled and i just think it's not relevant because sometimes I can go off track with these things. I've just noticed there's quite a few questions on journaling, so I'm going to group them all together. The questions were, can you please give some tips for journal prompts? And um, there was another one again, similar along those lines, how to journal, I'm stuck on a blank page, journaling for mental health tips and prompts. Was there anything else to do with journaling? I think that that was it. I started journaling to support my mental health and to basically gain deeper awareness and clarity because it's almost like I didn't know myself before I started journaling because I never allowed myself to like dig in and go inwards so I started journaling and all that I did to begin with was at the end of each day I'd answer four questions and if I remember correctly it was what went well today what didn't go so well today what can I do tomorrow that will help me and then there was a fourth maybe it was gratitude and that's how I started doing a gratitude practice. I remember with these journal prompts after a couple of weeks, I could see really clear patterns of things that I was doing almost unconsciously, like they'd just become part of my routine and I would just act them out because that's what I was used to, there were habits. And they really weren't making me feel good. Like one of them that really sticks out to me is the fact that I used to listen to a lot of news podcasts in the morning and looking at the news and looking at social media would be one of the first things that I did when I woke up and it just left me really like full of anxiety, full of overwhelm. I've since realized that I'm a highly sensitive person and kind of fall within that category. So the fact that I was waking up and consuming my mind with what was most of the time negative news really didn't work for me. And I found more of a balance now because I, for me, it's really important to stay informed and I want to keep up to date with things that are happening in the world. But equally, I shouldn't be doing that when I wake up first thing. And that is what journaling consistently and answering those four questions helped me realize and the gratitude piece at the end really helped me in that moment connect with the things that did feel good in my life and it also reinforced that kind of question of what felt good in your day reinforced the things that I needed to keep continuing to do and made me feel good and I needed to make more time for so yeah that's how I got into journaling for mental health and Something else I found is like journaling as a community. So I obviously have the monthly journaling club. I'm also part of a couple of other sub stacks where they'll share weekly journal prompts and things like that. So I'm part of different communities where we can collectively come together and journal. And that has really actually helped me reinforce the habit and also introduced new ways that I can basically like learn more about myself. And on that question of having a blank page, whenever I feel like I maybe need to dig into something and I feel a bit off and I, I'm not sure why, I'll come to my journal and usually I'll have that same feeling of just being blank and I'll actually write that down. So just write in a stream of consciousness so anything that's come into your head, get it out on the paper and you will be so surprised at how quickly that can unravel and it almost feels like an offloading exercise, like you're getting everything from your brain out onto the paper. So that's what I find really useful when it comes to journaling. There's also a couple of questions on yoga. One of them is how did you start? And then another one is how do you stay motivated with the yoga? I really need to stretch and move, but I struggle to focus. So I actually came to yoga and the asana postures practice that I think we're used to seeing and associating with yoga through meditation. So there's so many different elements to yoga. It's not just the postures and the stretches. Um, and I actually started meditating before I actually started doing the physical asanas, which is what we call them in yoga. Um, and I basically just, I think I discovered it mostly actually the physical practice through Yoga with Adrian and one of her January 30 day challenges. And since then I've really tried to learn more about the traditions of yoga, the history and how as a white woman teaching yoga, I can continue to make sure that I am respectful of the origins of it. Um, the place where I did my training, Bahia Yoga in Nottingham, they're really amazing at instilling that and 
I think what's kind of happened now is so I've really got into the physical practice and I love that and I find so many benefits of it but I'm also now doing a yoga nidra training and learning more about the meditation side because I'm just so passionate about rest and how important that is for so many of us in the mo in right now in this current moment and I mean yoga nidra is a rest practice and yoga in itself is kind of one of those practices again where we can go inwards and learn more about ourselves and I think that there's only positive things that can happen with that. So yeah, I guess that's how I started. I went into my yoga teacher training not really knowing what, what would happen afterwards and I'd actually say this first year of being fully qualified, I qualified in July 2022. So it's been like 18 months actually. I've been very experimental and just trying to figure out what kind of practices do I want to share and I feel like as my own practice is evolving, that's evolving too. So yeah that's how I started and then in terms of staying motivated I have had to realise that sometimes self-care feels uncomfortable. I actually wrote a substack on this recently because for pretty much the whole of last year I put off going to the gym yet I knew that I really wanted to feel stronger in my body, do more strength training and something about that felt really uncomfortable it's almost like I needed to give myself permission to have that time to go and do it start again I think I felt nervous about the fact that I hadn't been into a gym for a long time and it's the same with yoga like I have to remember there are days when I will not feel like doing it but ultimately I always always I don't think there has never been a single time unless I've gone to a class with a teacher that it's not particularly gelled that I have regretted doing yoga or practicing in some way and coming into the practice so yeah I think just building on that and also meeting yourself with kindness and, and compassion just reading this question again it says I really need to stretch and move but I struggle to focus and I think with that really thinking about yoga as so much more than just a practice to stretch but it's also the breath can be the focus for you so finding a yoga teacher that really focuses on the breath and knowing that it's a practice like you're it is difficult to focus <laughs> i have moments where i'm practicing yoga i'm like oh i'm not breathing like you're human i think be really kind to yourself and i've always found that when i meet myself with kindness and just hold myself through things when it does feel uncomfortable or i'm struggling or i've not got the motivation the outcome's always obviously so much better than if i'm really hard on myself because then I just think what's the point. Next question is how do you navigate your own self-growth while staying aligned with your husband? And I love this question. I think it's a really interesting one and it's something that like I actually read it out to Jay and then we got chatted about it. We talk about this naturally because we met when we were teenagers. We got married. I was 22, Jay was 24 and I'm 28 and Jay's 30 now. So we've spent nearly half of our lives together and through those fundamental years, like through your teenage years and 20s where you're just changing so much and we have somehow managed to stay aligned. And I think there are a couple of reasons for this. With Jay's work, he goes away quite a lot and that has really given us time to be individual people outside of the relationship. Like when I think back to when we were teenagers, we were kind of, not in each other's pockets, but definitely from my side, I probably relied on him more than I should have and having that time apart has really allowed me to I guess grow up in a sense like get to know myself and in terms of the kind of navigating self-growth I think it's just realizing that we're different people but our values align and our end goals align and we have those things in common that always bring us together. I think sometimes what can happen is obviously as you get older you get to know yourself better and then if you're, the person that you're, that you're with your partner is not doing the same or they become someone that you don't align with anymore it's just one of those things isn't it but luckily me and my husband have stayed aligned I'd say we communicate a lot like we talk to each other about everything all the time like we're just constantly talking about things and you know getting each other's opinion on things and just I guess trying to stay aligned like we understand that because we are both constantly evolving and changing, there's gonna constantly be that process of rechecking in and making sure that we do align. Another question actually, really interesting, any tips for relationship anxiety? I've never spoke about this online before, but I definitely had, have 
had relationship anxiety and it's something that I've had to work on, go to therapy about, I mean, not just about that, but you know, other things that happen, they can show up and manifest in different ways. And relationship anxiety was one of those for me. And almost this sense of, I have always wanted to be a very independent person and not rely on anyone, but obviously in a relationship, you know, you have to know that your partner can be there for you. And that's something that I've really had to work on. So I don't really have any tips per se. I think speak to people, go to therapy. Like I go to therapy once a week. It really supports me in my own self growth and more importantly, how I am with everyone around me, like my friends, my family, my husband, like it impacts everything else, um, including things obviously like relationship anxiety because you feel more secure in yourself. Just had to change my memory card, which is why the angles just changed. But I'm gonna do a couple more questions. Someone asked what's your current morning and evening routine. Currently, because it's winter, I, I mean, actually, my wake up time depends on the time of the month that it is. So when I'm coming towards like the end of my cycle, when like, I'm about to get my period, I stay in bed for longer and allow myself to lie in and have more rest and have more sleep. When I'm in kind of like that first phase of my cycle where I have more energy, I will typically kind of get up about half six, then maybe go to the gym, go for a swim, um, practice yoga, yeah, it all really depends on my energy levels and how I'm feeling. But I typically try and have between half six or seven to nine as time where I'll do things for myself, whether that is like more of a strength-based workout or going swimming or practicing yoga. Um, I am also doing a yoga nidra course at the minute and trying to practice yoga nidra, which is a 25 minute practice every morning. If I don't do it in the morning, I will then do it in the evening. So that's like my one daily non-negotiable thing. Um, but yeah, it's not very set in stone. And I just kind of, what I'll typically tend to do is based on what it's looking like the next day, plan it the night before. So I have a little bit of structure when I wake up in the morning and kind of know what I want to do when I've got that intention set. Another thing actually that feeds into this is the fact that Jay, my husband, works shifts. And if he's here in the morning, we'll tend to like want to go out for a morning walk together. So yeah, that's kind of what I do in the morning. In terms of evening, again, the one thing that is set is that I always read before bed, even if it's just like 20 to 30 pages. I always get in bed, have the electric blanket on, usually with a cup of tea, and read, and I really love it. Another thing I do actually in the evenings is I've got a line a day journal, and I'm trying to get better at making sure I fill it in every day because I got to from May to November I did really well and I kind of fell off it a little bit last year but I really want to pick that up because I feel like I mean my life is probably going to change a lot in the next five years just because obviously it's five years quite a long time so I'd love to be able to look back and kind of see what I was doing the years before so yeah nothing mega in there um I just try and as I said sync it up with the seasons for sure in the summer I do have an earlier wake up time usually like six o'clock in the morning because I'm just morning person but this time of year I try and sleep as much as I can. Someone's asked if you had to choose one negotiable in living a slower life what would it be and there were actually a couple of questions one of them how can I start living slower do you have any tips for living slower so my oh, one negotiable for living slower the first thing that's just come to my head is walking like when it comes to anxiety and overwhelm the act of walking and that movement for me really just shifts that energy and I do pretty much always feel better for going for a walk. So I'd say incorporate more walking and being in nature while you're doing it. So finding a local park, it doesn't have to be like this most spectacular, pretty amazing place, but just somewhere that you can connect to greenery, see greenery, maybe see like if you've got a lake nearby, anything like that. We're really lucky that we've got a really nice park that we can walk to and walking around there has been a really good practice as part of living slower and for me find it more balanced because it's one thing that I can do that like takes me out of the house, takes me out of work, takes me out of like being on my phone and things. I feel like walking is quite an obvious answer there but it is a non-negotiable for me and another thing actually if you're kind of just getting started with it is thinking about your values and what actually matters to you. That has I mean, last year that completely informed my year and things happened off the back of that that I hadn't even anticipated. 
So my word for the year is connection and connection is a really big value for me. Like wanting to feel like I'm of service to others, connecting with other people through my yoga, forming communities where people can connect and have that sense of being part of something. That is just something I'm really passionate about. And I set that as my word for the year. I did a lot of what all of my actions, well not all of them, but when I thought about how I wanted to show up, connection was part of that and it really helped and stirred me in the right direction and helped me live a more aligned life, which I think when we think about living slower, it's the aim really, like we just want to live in alignment with what matters most to us and connection's one of them. So yeah, think about your values. Brené Brown has a really good workbook and template for this and she lists out like a list of I don't know how many there is on there, but there's a lot. I think it's like 50 plus values that you can pick from. And she asked you to whittle it down to, I think, between one and three. And doing that really helped me realise, you know, what it is that's important to me and how I can move forward both in my work, in my personal life, literally in everything that I do um, that is in alignment with that. So, yeah. I'm going to do two final questions. Otherwise, this video is going to end up being even longer than last week's. And last week's was a really long one. Um, but the next one is, how did you shift to self-employed? I'm going to leave a link to a substack that I did in the description box and maybe I've done a YouTube video, actually, I can't remember. I did a very gradual shift to self-employed life because I honestly was really scared. I had a lot of issues around anxiety with money and security that comes with that. I've had to like do loads of work on that. Um, but yeah, I had a really interesting relationship with money actually where I just yeah <laughs> basically financial financial security is a very big thing for me and I was letting that stop me from going self-employed and obviously the financial side of it is something to consider but if I I think if I'd have really thought about it more I could have gone self-employed a lot sooner than I did so I waited too long then I went part-time in a sense it was a good thing because I had to manage my experience at the time and how I was feeling. At this point as well, uh, my nervous system was really overactivated, I was burnt out, I was working too much, so I think a lot of these things just stemmed into each other. But basically, I went down to four days a week at my job where I worked in marketing, so I had that additional day where I could think more about yoga, do more um, content, whether that's like taking pictures for Instagram, reels, whatever. Then I went down to three days with that, so again I had those extra two days. And then, when was it? 2022, I decided to go self-employed. So it was a really gradual thing. The place that I worked at the time were really good in letting me have that gradual process and just really supportive of it actually. So yeah, that's how I made the shift to self-employed. And now I can see myself maybe being employed when I'm like in my 60s, 70s, but I love being self-employed and can't see me going back to being employed anytime soon. The last question was around how I plan on living more frugally in 2024 because I'd basically shared in my video before Christmas on kind of like reviewing my slower year that being more frugal and mindful with money is something that I want to do in 2024 and this is in a completely different vein to how I used to feel about money. Like it's not just saving it for the sake of saving it because you feel like everything could combust, but more being very intentional about what you're purchasing and why you're purchasing it. This again comes back to my values, like I don't want to be really shopping from fast fashion brands anymore, buying things just for the sake of it, for like that dopamine rush. Um, yeah, I, I just want to make sure that, you know, obviously with the work that I do, I'm spending it on things that I actually want to spend it on, like being mindful about it. I just want to buy things I need. I don't want to be surrounded by stuff that is unnecessary. There isn't actually a plan in place on how I want to be more frugal in 2024, but there are things that I guess that I just want to carry on and continue doing that I did last year. I'd probably say the main things that are like coming to the top of my head is the fact that I still want to shop more on Vinted and avoid fast fashion. That is something I really want to do. I don't want to be spending money on things that aren't going to last. So in a sense, I might spend more on an individual item than I would previously, but it's with the intention of it lasting a lifetime. So that's what I want to continue to do. Something else this year, I think we're going to carry on doing up our house. So being really mindful and as frugal as possible with that, like with our kitchen, 
this is something that isn't currently in discussion so it's not being decided because my husband does a lot of the DIY stuff so basically it's me saying will you help me in a big way with this but our kitchen does kind of need a little bit of TLC and I feel like you know what we own this house I would love to have a certain style of kitchen why not make it happen um so I'd love to be able to do that but keep the existing cabinets we've got maybe look at painting them or like finding a way to do up our kitchen in a way where we're like using secondhand materials or using low cost things that are going to last but look good like just basically yeah probably in terms of renovations there will be some like mindful spending within that i'd probably say they're the two things off the top of my head um i mean i spoke in that last video that i did like things that we do currently that allow us to save more and just be more mindful with money and make the money that we do earn go further um another thing i guess it kind of ties into frugal living and talking about finances but making sure that like the savings we have are in high interest accounts exploring ways that we can invest and maximize the money that we do have yeah just all things like that very aware of like the fact that everything is going up and obviously being self-employed there is that level of uncertainty with that so yeah just continuing to be more mindful i think and have conversations about money like it used to be something that i'd avoid a little bit because it did make me feel uncomfortable for like the opposite reasons but just having those days where you sit down review your finances see if you're like spending on anything that you don't need to spend on um and yeah just going from there so that is how i plan on living more frugally in 2024 and i do actually want to speak about this more on substack so i probably will find ways to kind of weave that into my content because it's definitely an element of living slower that is really important and, and again i feel really passionate about so there are all the questions if you have another question let me know in the comments and i'll get back to you and maybe actually as well i'll put together a little bit of a document when i do get questions so that i could do this maybe like every six months um and do like a little update and things but yeah thank you for watching and next week's video actually if you've got this far because i'm aware that this is going to be a mammoth video um <laughs> next week's video we're basically going away this weekend to a tree house on Sunday and Monday we're staying there. So it's going to be a little vlog of that. I'm going to have another digital detox, completely phone free weekend. Um, so I'm going to document that and share my experience with it and bring you along for that. So subscribe if you are new or haven't subscribed already and I will see you next week. <laughs>